offer most loving pranams at the divine lotus feet of Bhagawan Sri Satya Sai Baba. So Sai Ram to Sai Ram to all of you. So I'd just like to tell you a few things that happened to me with Swami. I was born right at the beginning of First World, uh, Second World War, sorry, Second World War. I was still a little baby. And my grandfather owns this house inside a military compound. And the war started, so the military compound was bombed, first by the Japanese and we were in grave danger. Then suddenly there was a young man. He came to our house. He met my mother and he gave a little packet to my mother and told my mother, spread it over the roof and you'll be safe. So my mother was grateful and that man, that young man, left. My mother looked at the content of the packet and she described to me that it is white sand. So my mother took it and spread it all over the roof. And you know, bombing started, the war started. At first we were bombed by the Japanese. Very quickly our government gave up and did not fight the Japanese. So we allowed the Japanese to go through Thailand, to go to Myanmar, to go to Burma, to Malaysia and so on. Well, the British didn't like that. They were angry with us, so they started to bomb Bangkok. And of course the Japanese were there also. So our house was not only bombed by the Japanese, which didn't last more than one day and then we gave up, but the main bombing came from the British. They bombed and bombed our house. And you know, at the end of the war, all the houses around us were all destroyed. Our house was the only house left standing. <clears throat> so Swami saved my life. You know, how do I know it's Swami? Well, I didn't know because I didn't get to know Swami until when I was a little older. Yes, okay. I was already 40 years old when I met Swami for the first time. And I was invited to go and speak everywhere around the world. And also here, I came and spoke to the students. And you know, Swami was sitting in the audience. He wanted to listen to everything I say. But at the same time, I asked Swami, how long do you give me to speak? Swami said, one hour and 15 minutes. That's a long time to give in front of Swami. But he told me to do this. So I started to speak. And I told everyone about the incident that happened that saved my life. I said a young, young man came to our house, gave my mother a packet of white sand, and immediately Swami was laughing away. And he was turning around telling everybody, I didn't give his mother white sand, I gave Viputi. So you see, it was Swami who came 
and saved my life when I was born in 1940, a long, long time ago. So I owe everything to Bhagawan for my life. And you know, he's been looking after me. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful to our beloved Bhagawan Sri Satya Sai Baba. He saved, he saved my life. He gave Viputi to my mother to spread over the roof. My mother did not know, but I did bring my mother to see Bhagawan on one of the birthday celebrations. And my mother was so happy to be able to meet the man who came and saved our life. But we didn't know at that time. So you see, so you see, there's so many things that Swami has done to teach all of us. You know, Swami plays around a lot with everybody. And he played around with me quite a lot also. I used to have a lot of business. I was rich. I was a minister or uh, uh, helper to the minister uh, of education. I was a member of parliament. I was business person. I did, oh, I was well to do. So one day, I owned about three or four businesses altogether in Thailand. Suddenly, I lost everything. Everything was gone. People cheated me. And they, they decided to take over the companies and so on. Took it all away, suddenly. Then I received a note from Bhagawan. Come and give a talk to uh, lecturers, teachers who has come together in, in, um, in Puttaparthi. So I came, okay, but because I just lost all the business, I didn't have much money, I lost all my money, so I bought the cheapest ticket that was available. Okay, and once you buy this ticket, you cannot change. Okay, you cannot change the dates for returning or for traveling. Everything has to be fixed. So I bought this cheap ticket and I came to uh, put a party and we had that meeting. Okay, the um, Minister of Education of India came to open the meeting for the teachers and after that Okay, I uh, was called by Swami to go and meet him. So I went. And when I met Swami in the veranda, he said to me, you lost everything. I know. You don't have to tell me, because I was about to te tell him about everything, that I lost everything. I know everything. You lost everything. You lost all your business. I just want to test you. Oh, so Swami was doing a test. He took away all the things from me. So I smiled, I laughed, and then uh, I said to Swami, Swami, I need to leave uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, because I bought a cheap ticket and I cannot change my ticket. Swami said, no, you can't go. You know, once Swami said, no, you cannot go. You don't try to go. Not go. You don't try to go. Otherwise, you're in trouble. You know, I heard this. I told myself, Swami told me not to go, not to leave. I better not leave. Whatever Swami says, we must do what he told us to do. So I went back to my room. And I gave up the thought of leaving in the morning. But in the morning, a man came to my room, knocked on the door, said, Swami has invited you to go to 
uh, the back of the uh, uh, Gulbant Hall and uh, he wants to see you. So I went there and you know there was another room and we were told to go in that room and the minister who came to open the conference was there also. And we sat around the table, a round table, and Swami would come and serve us. He gave service to all of us. He came and put rice on my plate and he said, he asked me, you like that? I said, yes, Swami. Anything he gives to me, I said, yes, yes, oh, I love it. So he put more rice on it because I said, I love it. And so my plate was full of rice. Then he came around again with some curry. So he said, you like it? Yes, Swami. So we put curry, a oh, whole plate of rice and curries and everything else. Oh, so I had to eat and eat. I cannot leave anything on my plate. You know, then finally the minister said he had to leave. So we all got up. Okay, after being served by Swami, Swami was the great server, you know, really. He, I never seen him do this, but he was serving everybody with rice, with vegetables, with um, fruits and so on, you know, and I kept on t saying, yes, I love it, I love it. He put a lot of fruit on my plates as well. Anyway, finally the minister said he had to leave. So we all got up and went back uh, where the car was parked inside um, the ashram and Swami was there, I was there and the minister went into the car and the car left. Then Swami turned to me and said, Now you can go. I looked at my watch, the plane has already left. So Anyway, I do what Swami tells me to do. He said I can leave, so I, I decide to leave, but I already canceled my taxi. Swami said, don't worry, I arranged another taxi for you. So I went by taxi, I went to the airport, and you know, I was so surprised. The staff there said, quick, 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 the plane has not yet left, get on the plane. Okay. So I went on the plane, the same plane that I booked, but it left about three hours later. You know, it's much later than, than before. But, and then I had to go and change plane. You know, it's much later than, than before. But, and then I had to go and change plane uh, uh, at another city in India. So I went to that city, I landed, and again, the plane that I had to make connection has already left or should have left but it has not left and the staff there came to me and said quickly we're going to take you onto the plane I was the last person to enter the plane then the door closed and then the plane left the airport and I flew safely back to Thailand you see Swami is really uh, really strange. He did everything to teach me a lot of lessons and I learned to be detached, not to be attached to all the business uh, jobs that I had. Okay, And when I went back to Thailand, everybody regretted what they did and they returned all the companies to me. So Swami again tested everything. Swami used to uh, play with me a bit on the veranda in, uh, in Puttaparthi. He would come around and he was, would laugh in front of me and tell everybody, you know, this man, he's a scientist, not scientist, scientist you know so one day there were four famous scientists came to visit Swami 
And that scientist, all, all these scientists were the top scientists of India. So Swami called the four scientists inside his room. And then he looked at me, he said, you are a scientist, come. So I went into the room with all the top scientists uh, in India. And then he started to materialize things for all these scientists. He said, you understand this? Ask the scientist. The scientist said, no, we don't understand. Then he said to me and to everyone, okay, this is easy to materialize objects, rings and so on. It's easy. But I want to show you something. And he waved his hand and put his hand together. Then he started to raise his hand and to our surprise there was a little monkey, very small monkey. Then he raised his hand further and the monkey grew in size and became a big monkey. Swami let go of the monkey and the monkey was jumping around inside the interview room. So he asked the scientist, you understand this? Scientist said, no, we don't understand anything. And so he asked me, I don't understand either, Mahaswami. Anyway, then he told me, do you want the monkey? I'll give it to you. I said, no, Swami, I'll give it to the scientists. <laughs> <clears throat> but all the other scientists, the four scientists who were there, top scientists of India, they all said, no, Swami, we don't know what to do with the monkey. So Swami told me to go and get the monkey. He brought it on his lap and put his, put his hand on the head and the other hand on the bottom there and he started to push the hands together. The monkey became smaller and smaller and smaller. Finally, it disappeared. <clears throat> So you see, Swami is really an amazing person. He did all this just to teach the scientists. That is not what we see. That is what we call science. Everything that is around us. You've got to understand something that is inner, within yourself, within your own heart. You've got to understand God. You've got to understand things that are not seen as well. And scientists, including me, I said, we don't understand, Swami. But anyway, Swami kept on teaching us, teaching us a lot of lessons. So that was a great experience. 